Hello and welcome to the Build a Bear Workshop. My name is Pat Bear. I'm here to build a model kit and to hang out with all of you. I'm throwing the Bear Cave, the Lego, the Scythe, and the Tier 2 Blue Emote in the chat. If you are currently a subscriber, you can apply with those emotes. If you're not a subscriber, you can say hi or use other people's emotes or be a lurker, and that's also okay. We got Harold in the chat. We got Njon in the chat. We got Jam in the chat. We got Lashbrook in the chat. The chat is full of great people. Welcome, everybody. Happy to have you here on a lovely Monday. Um, it is the week of Thanksgiving reminders right at the top of the stream. I will be streaming on Thanksgiving. I often stream it on, uh, uh, on Friday instead, but this uh, year I will be doing a Thanksgiving stream because we're cooking here in the house and we'll be done hours before the stream. Um, and I'll probably take a turkey nap and then wake up and, uh, build a model kit. Cause I want to do that. Um, also I have stuff going on on Friday, so I can't do it Friday night. Um, Tomorrow night, Pokemon Platinum Randomizer. That's right. Everyone's fucking talking about Pokemon. Uh, so let's play a DS game that we where we left off. Uh, uh, instead of playing the Pokemon game that everybody is talking about. Um, I have to imagine mine will be less buggy. Uh, John says, is the Thursday stream going to be themed like a, a turkey Gundam? No. There is... There are some Lego that are Thanksgiving stream. Just another spicy says hi. Hello to you. Welcome. Um, there are some Thanksgiving Lego stuff, but I don't believe there's any turkey Gundam or anything that would be close to that. Like even like a pilgrim Gundam. I don't think we're going to get there on that. Um, so no theme for Thursday other than the usual theme of model kits and Lego sets. Because uh, we'll probably be still working on the heavy arms. Which brings me to this, it's the Heavy Arms Custom. Now, you're like, Custom, do you mean it's the Heavy Arms from Endless Waltz like you have over here, Pat, on the shelf there? that We built that Master Grade, and it's one of your white whales, and you were so incredibly excited to finally build it. No, no, no. This is the Heavy Arms you're thinking of, but just added uh, another barrel to the gun arm, and then uh, make the, like, the side skirt and the back skirt slight like slightly different um and then add two more rockets to the backpack and that's it that's really it um this is the premium bandai exclusive uh this is late gundam wing heavy arms but pre endless waltz right indeed and john this is mid-season replacement minor upgrade so it's different from like the shenlong becoming the altron or the Death Scythe becoming the Death Scythe Hell. This is more like the Sand Rock got a minor upgrade and uh, the Heavy Arms got a minor upgrade. Not enough to even give it a new name. Um, literally, it's the same instructions from the 2020 uh, kit, which was released in 2021, but whatever. It's the 2020 kit. It's the exact same booklet. And then they give you just another piece of paper and they're like, hey, here's everything that's different about this. It's a slightly revised basically a c and e1 and 2 are revised from the previous and there's some like new stickers uh here's your custom page yeah here's your custom paper yeah so it's basically just like hey um do these do these different steps on 9 and 10 and 11 uh 9 11 and 12 basically and then i have just gone in and marked the stuff that i shouldn't do on here and i'm like don't do that because you do the other one uh, and it's a shame because the steps we're doing are on the color paper. Also, step 10 is put the mo model kit together. So it's like, don't put the model kit together uh, without doing these other steps. It's fine. Um, they've done that. I've done this before on stream where you get the minor upgrade and it's just an extra part. It's an extra thing. Um, when we built the heavy arms, uh, you might remember when we built the heavy arms, uh, not heavy arms, the death scythe. Remember when we built the Death Scythe that had the cool wings? It was kind of like the Wing Gundam wings. That was just the same Death Scythe they already built. And there was an extra piece of paper for like a different backpack and the wings. Um, so that's just kind of like what this is, even though this this is anime canon. Uh, whereas that was like um, manga canon. You get it. Um, so this is basically a kit I've already built on stream. But it was a fun build that I liked, and I'm excited to work on it. Uh, so I'm not I'm not complaining. And again, there's some different stickers. There's slightly different stickers on the 
back skirt and the side skirt have a little bit different. And the backpack, they're, I don't understand it. There are rockets that go up and down under that. I think it's for maneuverability. Who knows? But, um, hey, Lord Crash, and welcome. We're just talking about the heavy arms that I'll be uh, working on uh, tonight and how it is. Basically the same heavy arms, except it's slightly different than the one we've already built, which is cool. Um, and we're going to get to that in just a minute. We'll talk about some gaming news and other entertainment news. Um, talk about some wrestling. Talk about uh, some updates with me. Uh, I did see, Lashbrook, yes, there is a Rose Gundam high grade. Uh, it is a premium Bandai kit, and I do not believe that it is... Uh, I'm going to look this up. Like, I, I, who, wh where is it a premium Gundam? Rose Gundam. Let's see here. Got the Rose Gundam uh, news. Uh, da, 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 no, 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 not seeing anywhere. But there is a, there's a new Rose Gundam. Uh, premium from Premium Bandai, but I don't think it's U.S. Premium. Which is it? Rose Gundam Premium. I'm not finding it. I'm just finding the Rose Gundam page on Gundam Wiki. Oh, here we go. All right. Gundam News has this exclusive. So my or the news anyway, not exclusive. Um, there is a new high grade Gundam Rose model kit releasing in February 2023. It is a high grade Rose Gundam. We have the non grade Tiny Rose Gundam available on my Amazon wish list. Um, uh, I have never built that kit in any incarnation of the Rose Gundam from, from G Gundam. Um, let's see. Now well, we got the story here. Gundam News is saying um, Bandai Spirits announced premium Bandai release. Okay, so it's a premium Bandai uh, Future Century. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Um, okay, it's New France, yes. Yes. Uh, okay, let's talk about that. Talking about that. Gundam Rose, yep, yep. Uh, it has a uh, a clear stand. It comes with a clear stand to go along with some of its clear weapons, which that clear stand looks beautiful. It's a clear blue. It's like a, a you know, that was really nice. Um, through Premium Bandai. But now I'm checking the source. Uh... But I don't think it showed up on the U.S. Bandai. It is not on the U.S. Bandai page. It is uh, It is on the... Yeah, okay. Yeah. So it is not shown up on the... Uh, yeah, okay. So it's not available in the United States, it looks like. But it's on the Japanese one. So, uh, I mean, if it shows up on the U.S. one, I'll get it. Because it looks beautiful. The effect parts, uh, yes. The effects parts so that it can uh, uh, launch the rose bits are, are, are very cool. You're not wrong, Lashbrook. Um, it looks beautiful. I don't know if it'll end up on the U.S. Premium Bandai site. I hope it does. Uh, depending on the price, I will certainly pick it up. I would say if it's in the $40 range for a high grade, that's totally reasonable and something that I would do. If it's in like $50 for a high grade, even a high grade that hasn't existed before and looks fucking dope Ugh. maybe not fifty dollars but certainly forty dollars i'd spend forty no question anyway uh let's not talk about a model kit that like i don't know if i'll ever get let's work on the model kit that i did get uh i am going to retweet my tweet uh let's see if we can get a few more friends to join us tonight it is monday excited to work on this perhaps um Perhaps my uh, promoting the stream on other social media sites uh, besides, there we're good, we're good here, um, besides uh, Twitter will mean that some people will come check me out. Because uh, if you didn't know, I've talked about it before, I'm on co-host and as of yesterday, I'm on Hive. Now, if you're like, Pat, how come I haven't fucking heard about Hive before yesterday? It's been a, It's been out there for a little bit. Hive is a social media platform that feels a lot like Twitter, um, but has some functionality of like Tumblr um, right out of the gate. And a little bit of MySpace thrown in because you can link your Am uh, Apple Music account uh, right now uh, on iOS and then uh, have music play on your profile page, which is silly and, and does not need to exist. Um, I don't have an Apple Music account, so I have not 
link those two together. But you can do that and have like a profile song, which I find very silly. But anyway, um, I'm I'm at Pat Bear on both co-host and Hive. Um, I forget who in my mentions was just like, hey, I'm on Hive. It feels like, you know, it's pretty good. And I went and took a look at it. Um, and it's a small team. They are going through rounds of... Uh, of um, venture capital funding. I know for some people that is a no go. They are not interested in working for or being on a social media platform that uses uh, funding like that. But I feel like um, unless you are actually just rich, you cannot launch a social media platform without venture capital. I just don't think that's plausible. So uh, take what you can get. Um, I'll abandon it if it sucks. Um, I just realized it uh, says last book. It, it seems like the perfect time to bring back early web. Imagine if hypnospace outlaw was our social media. I mean, one of the reasons why I'm not using Mastodon is because it feels like, um, it Mastodon feels like it was made by people who are mad that you, that you don't use Linux. Uh, I like Hive so far, uh, says Harold, just another spicy says, uh, yeah, it was a two person team. They just added a third today. Yeah. And co-host is a small team. They're just adding, I believe a fourth person, um, uh, like they're, they're actively looking for a fourth person. So both teams small, appreciate that one out of VC funding, another out of personal savings and possibly a loan. I don't know. Excuse me. Pardon me here. Uh, Make sure the points are aligned. Okay. So let's get this together. We'll do some panel lining once we get a few more parts of this done. Because uh, we got to put stickers over stuff anyway. So we'll, we'll do that. Uh, at least get this next step in. And then we'll uh, we'll get going here. Let's see. We need D225. Got that here and here. Um, but yeah. Uh, overall, I, I'm impressed with Hive. Uh, I wish that Hive had a web app. Or sorry. Hive has a web app co-host does not but hive does not have a web-based uh, uh version so i'm using co-host on my phone which i don't prefer or so hmm, wow i'm getting all kinds of confused pardon me i'm using hive on my phone but i can't log into like hive social.com or something to type things in and then on the other side of it co-host you can kind of use in a browser and they're working on the browser based way to make it look good, but it's still not great on a browser because they don't have a native app for it. Um, but, uh, so it's kind of like opposite issues of me being annoyed with it. And I know some people on Android have had some issue, uh, getting, um, things to work, uh, for them on, uh, on, over on Android for Hive. But yeah, I'm using Hive. It seems fine. Uh, I like Co-host a lot because Co-host feels like Tumblr um, with some marked improvements. Like Co-host, you just put in a link and if it can embed, it will embed instead of having to be like, this is a photo post or this is a video post. Like, I don't like that. I, I like just like the free form of this is a post and put in what you want. Um, I've always liked that, so I, I find that to be uh, a little uh, simpler in a way that I appreciate over on uh, over uh, on co-host. And then, yeah, Hive is doing its thing, and uh, I don't hate that. Uh, it is kind of fun to, like, follow a bunch of people. But I, I posted about my streams on both those platforms, uh, which now means there are four places that I'm like, hey, I, I'm streaming, because I also write in my own Twitter. My, my own Twitter, obviously, and then also in my own Discord. So, like, there's a lot of places where I'm saying, hey, come watch me stream. And hopefully, some of those will be effective. Because it's nice when people come watch my streams. Weirdly enough, I like it when people come check me out and watch my streams. I'm, I'm, go I'm so, so goofy that way. Um, also, speaking of Twitter, I just want to put this in here. There was a tweet from the from the dumb man. The dumb man made a dumb tweet, which said, because it was supposed to, uh, they were supposed to bring back blue verified, uh, you know, or blue that includes verified. Um, they were supposed to bring that back. And apparently, 
We're holding off relaunch of Blue Verified until there is high confidence of stopping impersonation. We'll probably use different color check for organizations than individuals. So they're going to do they're going to do a different color check mark. So the blue check could be a real person or a fake person. But if you're an organization, you get a different color check. And does that mean everyone who is verified through uh, the old means, if they are an organization, their color will change as well? So if you pay $8 and you get that blue check mark, you can't easy if you impersonate a uh, uh, like an organization, it'll be obvious. But if you impersonate another person, it won't be obvious. That it's almost like using the same system of verification that everyone got used to and making it so it's just cost a couple dollars due was a dumb idea by a dumb man. It's almost like it was a bad call and he should regret the choice. That when anyone can be verified, no one is verified. Also, he could take my check mark. I don't care. I like, it's nice for when I'm tweeting that people could at some point know, oh, that's Pat talking right now. That was nice, but like, does it really benefit me over, I don't know. I have no idea if it really benefits me or not. But it's clearly like a fucking problem. Uh, so that, that's our that's our Elon Musk update. Uh, what a fucking goof. Uh, really fucking ruining a company in people's lives. Also, uh, most likely going to go to court in Europe for uh, the... The layoffs, because uh, uh, because a lot of them were not layoffs. They were just firings with no notice. And the European Union is fucking mad at Elon Musk. So that's fun, because he definitely fucked around uh, with people's uh, livelihoods in Europe. And it's, even though, even if he thinks that the of it as a American company, even if he considers Twitter to be just like a place in America... It is an international company with international, and it did up until fairly recently have a lot of international employees, and uh, good luck, dude. Uh, yes, Harold. Uh, Elon Musk represents a certain kind of person, but it is not the uh, uh, autistic Asperger's community. He is not a representative of that community, Harold. Um, I, I do appreciate you wanting to make that clear. Um, in the same way that we don't excuse behavior based on where you're from or, or, or what your, uh, what, what's going on with you. Uh, we, we don't, we don't, you know, brush those things aside. Um, uh, no, I mean, he's a, he's someone who inherited wealth, um, from, from awful means and then use that inherited wealth to purchase companies and then make it seem like those are his companies, and then make it seem like he's uh, irreplaceable, and then also take a lot of government subsidies to uh, further uh, keep the grift going, um, because everything he's associated with, he, the 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 nicest thing you can say about him is uh, he invested in some companies before people before other people got the vibe that those companies might be worth something. Yes, Harold. Uh, I, I would say um, I, uh, I don't know if I'm fully comfortable making that comparison just because I am not part of either community. Um, but I will say that uh, yes, uh, it is very clear that he doesn't he does not represent uh, that community in any way, shape or form uh, and he's an embarrassment, you know. Fucking totally, totally, completely an embarrassment and a bother, uh, it, it, you know, and garbage. As a, it, you know, I'm not saying anything new or groundbreaking here. It's like the man sucks, just clearly sucks. All right, we're gonna put we're gonna put our first stickers on here on the chess piece. We got to get this lovely orange chess piece on here, and then we're gonna we're gonna put some stickers on here and then apply them. 
we'll put this on first and then apply stickers to this because it'll be easier. I love the orange. I mean, the color combinations here of red and orange uh, are so beautiful and white. It's just the Heavy Arms has such lovely color choices. Just a fantastic kit. We've got to apply some stickers here. Uh, you remember this little guy? Yeah, so this is the... Um, we can actually probably zoom in a little bit here. We can zoom in a little bit more. Uh, this is the Heavy Arms, um, but this is the custom, a good sunset range of colors. Indeed, Lord Crashington. Uh, this is the Heavy Arms from, from uh, Gundam Wing. This is the custom, which means it is the mid-season upgrade, and that therefore it has two barrels in its in its handgun or its arm gun i should say instead of one so it is basically the kit that came out in 2021 that was supposed to come out in 2020 but got pushed due to you know the world um so it's basically that kit with just a uh, slightly different backpack slightly different weapons and then some of the skirt like the back skirt and the side skirt are slightly different um but it's for the most part pretty much identical which is why it didn't get like a cool nickname it just got like a mid-season upgrade and then you had to really look to get that kit uh anywhere else all right so put that on there this is a bendy sticker or a folding it is a sticker that has to fold not bend it has to fold and so we will do our best to apply that as well as we can uh the doors for this because i'll probably have it barrel open will hide the fact that um, my sticker application could be um, not great. Uh, let's see. So we talked about all of that. Uh, again, updates are, are, are a reminder. My stream tomorrow, Pokemon Platinum Randomizer. I'm continuing my randomizer run. I've loved doing it. Uh, we made some good progress last time we streamed, so we're going to continue that progress. Uh, that's tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern, so a Tuesday night stream. So please be sure to check that out, one of my bonus streams my non-building uh, streams. And then I am streaming on thir Thursday. It'll be a Thanksgiving stream. We'll talk about what we're thankful for. We'll talk about our holidays. If anybody did anything cool, we'll chat about that stuff as I continue work on this kit, which I definitely will not finish tonight. So tune in on Thursday for that. Um, there we go. That's how this sticker should look. And then we're just going to use the blade here to kind of press down. Uh... Are you planning to look for uh, Valamir, the Ashen Knight kit? Uh, ooh, I'm going to look that up and, re you know, refresh my memory on that. Um, the Ashen Knight is one of the seven Dragon Knights. Okay, what is the... I'm... Uh, oh, this is a, uh, a, a, a Trails game. Okay. Yeah, I'm not super familiar with this. Um, apologies. Uh, Trails of Cold Steel. It's from Trails of Cold Steel. Okay. Yeah, uh, I will have to say this. I, I'm not super familiar with this mobile suit or, you know, this mech, I should say. Uh, it is armor. Okay. Two different pilots. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not super familiar with this particular thing. It looks fucking cool. Um, I like its chest, like eye. I don't think that's an eye, but I like that a lot. Uh, it looks dope as hell. I just don't. Can't. Yeah, there it is. There it is. Oops, it went away. Why does it do that? As soon as I like look at it, it, it goes away. So hold on. Put this here. Uh, it's on pre-order. Okay. Yeah, I don't know because I don't really know this particular uh, thing. Uh, did that work? Yes, it did. Okay. Well, it goes away. I don't know why. Dragging. A, oh, it's a, that's why because of what file type it is. Okay. That thing looks cool. Look it up, friends. That That is a dope looking mobile suit or mech that uh, I don't expect that I will be um, searching for because I've never heard of it. Uh, but it does look neat. Um, thank you for, for sharing. Uh, oh yeah, unfortunately can't put a link in there. Um, I have that set up because I do not have mods. So I, just to make things easier, I don't allow people to put links in. Um, so my apologies on that. Uh, all right. Now we got a bunch of stickers and some pieces that got to go on our doors here. So we just get some doors ready. Um, from the, the... I want to talk about this. Uh, 
look, nothing's going to happen with this. It was just weird. Um, so IGN. I don't follow a lot from IGN. I keep an eye on what's going on with them, but I don't really like... I have a few... Some of the reviews, I think, are very fair, and they do cover some games that I don't see covered in some other publications of their size. But I don't really follow IGN. Uh, so much so that I don't follow them on Twitter. And I did not know that they recently tweeted about how much money um, uh, was made by Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, the movie. It earned over $400 million. Um, and then because it's a, um, I assume specifically because, you know, Marvel and DC, uh, it was compared to uh, the, the last uh, DC movie that came out in October, Black Adam, which made globally $353 million. Now, obviously... We haven't had Black Panther Wakanda Forever out for that long, so it is believed that it will make more than $400 million. It's just where it's at now. And so it's definitely easily going to be making more. And, you you know, for me anyway, I look at that and go like, yeah, of course. Like, yeah, you compare it to that. You know who didn't like this comparison that likes competition but feels like this is an unfair comparison? Apparently The Rock. The Rock was unhappy. Or, or the... the the Rock or or the people that tweet for The Rock needed to reply to IGN um, because uh, Black Panther is a global brand and no one had ever heard of Black Adam or the Justice Society of America before a year ago, so they shouldn't be compared, which is false. It's certainly, I would say, if you said, oh, I'm going to go see Black Panther, no one would go, do you mean Black Adam? And maybe Black Adam isn't, like, known at, as well. I'm sure that certainly is it. But, like, The Rock shouldn't say, sh The Rock shouldn't be out here saying, like, nobody had ever heard of the character I'm playing in the movie because he's the fucking Rock. Like, I'm sure a bunch of people went to it because it was the rocks in a DC movie, the rocks in a, a superhero movie, the rocks in a movie. Uh, oh, it was, it was him directly since, well, I'm saying this is the thing that's important to say very much for you all to understand. It is very reasonable to assume that celebrities do have, do tweet or post in their own social media, their Instagram, their Twitter, whatever. It's totally fair to believe that. But it, you shouldn't think that they're the only ones that do. So you can't be 100% sure that The Rock is tweeting at IGN like, hey, be cool, IGN. Like you can't because he's not the only one with that account. Now you might say, well, it's obviously the ones that are like the promotional stuff. Like those are very clear. But when it's like, just, you know, him just talking about stuff he's into. It's like, yeah, sure. Maybe it is The Rock. Maybe The Rock was just like, come on, guys. Don't compare the two. But, like, you're The Rock. Like, I don't... It's one of those things where he's like, I don't know what to tell you, man. Like, you, you, you're Black Adam. That's cool. But, like, I don't, I don't know, dude. Like, I don't... I don't think that The Rock needs to be like adding a company <laughs> that's like talking about how his movie didn't make as much money as another movie. And it's just like, it just feels like unnecessary and like weird because it's The Rock. Like, I don't know. Maybe I'm the one who's wrong and The Rock should be defending his movie from, the, from IGN's Whatever. Uh, the best response is from several people, including uh, uh, folks we know, uh, to more replying, everyone should just go and enjoy their gaming. Which is true. Everyone should just go enjoy their gaming and not talk about movie things. I don't know. And then, of course, there are people out there who are saying things like, why is IGN even talking about this? Uh, and those are people that don't go to websites anyway, and they don't understand that those websites have to talk about other shit, like Polygon, Kotaku, IGN, GameSpot. All of those sites 
talk about pop culture shit. They talk about severance and superhero movies and like sports stuff and whatever else they can because they need SEO. They need people to type in things that are looking for things and hope they end up on those websites so those websites can continue to exist. And does that suck? Yeah. It sucks that you can't just have a pure gaming website these days, but also you can't. Like, you just can't. Because also people that are like, why does Polygon talk about this stuff? It's like, well, because you have ad blocker on and everything's fucked. I don't know what to tell you. Like, I'm not telling people to turn ad blockers off for sites and look at terrible ads and have a poor, piss poor experience. I am not telling people to do that. Um, but I am telling people that, like, do not be surprised that websites like that have to, like, like have to survive. It's like the reason why most people at Fanbyte were laid off, except for the guide writers, because guides dr bring in traffic. So the guide people, some of whom were contract anyway, but the ones that weren't contract were kept around because that's fucking money. Uh, that's how a lot of shovelware mobile games are named with lots of keywords. Yes. So you will search so that when you search for a term, instead of the exact thing you want, when you have a vague idea of what you want and you search for it on a, on like search uh, on like your phone, it will maybe come up. You'll, you'll find that instead. Or you were searching for something else and you find that. And you're like, oh, is this what I wanted? It's not what you wanted. It's never actually what you wanted. It never is. But it could be, but it's not. All right, I got one of these done. I gotta do the other one here. Anyway, I thought that was funny that The Rock was just like, come on, IG Ed, be cool. He's just like, all right. Um, let's see, other things. Uh, oh, um, we'll talk about more wrestling uh, in a bit, but let's say uh, Fight Forever, which is the video game. Uh, uh, that is out, outcoming, uh, scheduled for February, 2023, um, uh, from Ukes, uh, made an Unreal Edge in four. Uh, and if you're like, Hey Pat, has Ukes ever made a game in Unreal Edge in four? Don't worry about it. Ukes has made a couple earth defense force games in Unreal Edge in four. So I'm sure it'll be great. I'm, I'm worried about that game. Anyway, fight forever, uh, has a new, has new art. Uh, they have new uh, uh, game cover art that does not have CM Punk on it, which is smart of them to not have CM Punk on it because he possibly doesn't work for the company anymore, but the very least is like probably, probably technically works for the company, but not in a performance capacity or a going to be on fucking television or be talked about capacity more in a like, we're paying you to finish this contract out or something. Uh, sort of way. Although some people apparently think he's coming back. That him doing um, commentary for like some low tier UFC thing is part of some sort of like storyline thing. Uh, which is like, nah, nah, dude. <laughs> I mean, n n no. Uh, no, he, he's, he's definitely done. Like never say never, he could come back, but this isn't like storyline stuff. This is like, just life stuff. Um, I mean, you know, every, you know, nothing's impossible. But I would imagine he's done with wrestling for a very long time because no one's going to be able to afford what he wants to pay that are not in the big two, and neither of the big two really want to work with CM Punk right now. So I think it'll be a long time before that changes. Um. Let's see other gaming stuff. Uh, gaming and entertainment. Um, we'll talk about real briefly. I don't have a lot to say about this, but Sunday night is an incredibly strange time to, uh, to just basically announce that chief executive of Disney, uh, uh, Bob Capic is no longer the chief executive and Bob Iger is returning who just like that dude was hand that one Bob picked the other Bob and then retired and then three years later, last Bob is back. 
uh, which he, you know, very strange. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Also, part of that was that um, uh, I don't know why, but as of the head of Disney, uh, uh, Capic was going to be introducing Elton John for his last U.S. performance. And I guess that didn't happen. <laughs> um, also, it took forever for Iger to actually retire last time because he kept postponing it. Uh, and then he was like unhappy with him. And now he's back. It's real weird. Uh, also, like people are like, oh, well, he lost all this money. And it's like, I mean, Disney Plus lost a bunch of money, but that's like. That's inherited problems. That's my. That's always been my opinion. So what is you're like, okay, well you can say like, hey, this thing is doing bad. Well, was that his idea or is that like that's Iger's idea? And now the fun thing is, it can just be this dude's idea. Like Iger came back and is just like, oh, I can't believe you've done this. Oh, so terrible. You did all. You did the these bad things. How, how dare you? It's like, mm, okay. Pass the blame. Um, I mean, also, Chavik, the don't say gay bill stuff uh, uh, and his, uh, he, you know, like the fact that not only was he like, we're not getting involved with this shit. Um, he was also like, hey, not only are we going to try to stay neutral, um, also, I'm going to move a bunch of employees from California to Florida. Who were like, don't. Um, uh, so part of it is the parks, uh, a lore, lore crashing there, but it seems like nobody liked him. Uh, you know, he fired uh, a bunch of stuff on their, on their, uh, the, the, the movies and TV stuff. Like, um, uh, the legal dispute with Scarlett Johansson, just like a bunch of stuff, uh, a bunch of choices of like uh, putting a bunch of like interesting things on uh, a bunch of like a bunch of Pixar stuff, just direct to video or direct to Disney Plus without like at the same time even doing theatrical releases. Like there's just like a lot of there's a lot of like distrust with him. So it's like, oh no, this one with like a girl in it, we can't put out there. But we'll put out the the one they did put back out or put out there was the, the Buzz Lightyear that people were just like, nah. um. Oh yeah, some some nonsense stuff, real nonsense. Uh. But then, yeah, why is Iger going back is, is a question posed here on this uh, Polygon article. We don't know. But mainly, he maybe he just went back because he was like, ah, the guy I picked fucked up. I got to, like, go back there and pick a new guy. It's totally possible. That's the only reason. Um, and that's why it's very clear that the person that needs to do all this the person that will save Disney and become the next successor is, of course, John Vignocchi. Not really, not really. Don't that was not that's joke. That is not <laughs> that's joke. It's not gonna. It's not gonna be Vignocchi. Definitely isn't Vignocchi. <laughs> but I do think it's very funny to be like, yeah, I'm the VP of Disney. Yeah, it's just gonna be John Vignocchi, of course. Why wouldn't it be John Vignocchi? Um. Let's see. Uh, yeah, people were just bummed with this dude. Uh, all right, and on a sad note, we will we will chat about this. Um, uh, Joe John Drake, yes, also John Drake, another another strong possibility. Um, on a sad note, the Green and White Ranger uh, in the original U.S. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Uh, uh, Jason David Frank has passed away at the age of 49. Um, and so 
I was probably a little old for Power Rangers when it came out, but I did think it was cool, and I did know it was Japanese. I had not seen it uh, in ja- the Japanese versions, but I was, like, aware of them and, like, thought it was pretty fucking cool. And so people who were, like, a little younger than me uh, certainly uh, loved it. And um, I will say that uh, uh, um, the Green Ranger, later the White Ranger... Uh, had a had a pretty surprisingly deep and introspective redemption arc, which for some fans of like television, young fans of television, might have been the first time they ever saw like such a blatant like uh, story of somebody who through you know through brainwashing did things that he didn't want to do, and then. Uh, but couldn't, you know, couldn't necessarily excuse them, excuse them, and then worked hard to better himself and to make up for the things that had happened. Uh, and that is not something you saw a lot in afternoon or morning, depending on where you watched it, like afternoon television uh, for for kids and young teens. Um, yeah, you know, it's, a, it's a great redemption arc of a of a villain, uh, and also. The Dragon Zord fucking rules. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Dragon Flute is a dagger that's also a flute. That fucking kicks ass. He's, you know, it's like he's green, but he's got a lot of gold for some reason. Just cool, cool armor. Just like a cool looking, cool, just fucking, you know, and you know, Tommy was cool. It was a cool, cool character. Uh, and the White Ranger was also pretty cool. Um, um, I saw someone post on how they were supposed to meet both Jason David Frank and Kevin Conroy at an upcoming convention. Yeah. Yeah. They both, they both have passed clearly close to another. Um, and, uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, 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 the Yellow Ranger did pass away uh, 2001 in a car accident. And now that is the uh, second of the original six to have passed away. Um, yeah. Uh, I have a few friends that you know, know him just from convention goings for also doing conventions and seem to be very, very happy uh, to see him. Seemed to be a dude that was dealing with some stuff. Um, uh for many, many years, and it's a, you know, it's sad. It's weird. Because it is also one of those things where you're like, somebody that I saw, like, a lot of uh, on television, but, like, has a kid, like, you know, you you feel it, but it's just like, oh, yeah, huh. I watched a lot of Power Rangers. I watched every episode of that original run of Power Rangers, huh? And, and uh, I went to go see that Power Rangers movie, huh? Yeah, I spent I spent allowance money to go see that movie, huh? Yeah, I definitely spent a lot of time thinking about the Power Rangers at that time. Weird. It's not really connected in my head, that case. Uh... Oh, I don't... Dirt, first of all, hi, Dirty. I do not remember how long that was. There was the reboot, the official reboot movie that was only a couple of years ago. Um, but I don't know about the fan ones because I I will say I kind of don't pay attention to fan uh, projects that often. There was a Mega Man fan movie that I don't know if it ever actually fully came out. But I remember watching the extended trailer of it and thinking like, this is pretty fucking cool. Um, but I, I tend to not pay too much attention to... Um, uh, fan projects like that. Um, but yeah, obviously. Uh, certainly, yes. Oh yeah, I forgot he was a he was trying to become a mixed martial artist uh, and had some fights in the 2010s. But yeah. The... 
Goddamn top comment, Jesus Christ. Uh, the top comment on, on this article is uh, someone who is upset that they are not talking about the cause of death because it has not been confirmed and the family did not mention in the statement, but TMZ is reporting rumors uh, of the cause of death. But because the family didn't say it, IGN and among other people, oh, there's a Kotaku article I was reading, uh, have not included it. And so people are like, hey, just because you don't talk about it doesn't make it go away. And it's just like, yeah, no, that's not what this is. It, they haven't talked about like, like you can you can believe TMZ when it comes to like you know reports of death. Certainly, they tend to know what they're talking about. But like, the cause of death's not out there. Like, you could just shut the fuck up about it. Because right now it's just rumors, and maybe they're true rumors. But right now it's just rumors, and so we don't we don't dig into those kind of rumors. But yes, also yeah. Uh, in general, you're right. You don't read the comments, especially comments on, uh, um, uh, the deaths of anyone. Basically, you certainly don't want to be mixed up with those comments because they're just trash. Working on the face here of our kit. Um, we got a little time left uh, before our pause for the cause. Uh, wrestling. I'll get into some wrestling pretty quick here. Um, I talked about some of the matches from uh, AEW Full Gear that happened uh, while I was uh, uh, I'd watched them before the stream happened on Saturday. There are a few more that we can talk about. Um, uh, I'll kind of go these pretty quick. Uh, Jade Cargill defeated Nyla Rose. Of course, she did. It was a pretty competitive match, but it was like a very obvious result. It wasn't going to be anything else. Um, but I'm hoping that. Jade works with people, more people like Nyla. I actually wish there had been a bit of more of a program there with some tag matches or something, something where she could have like looked a little like worried about winning or whatever. Just a little something more uh, would have been nice. But uh, Nyla is just a great wrestler and Jade is leaps and bounds and proves, but is in a fucking Goldberg spot where she can only get so much better before people are just like, uh, I don't care. Um, but it was, you know, also, if you're going to come out on just to, if your entrance is going to involve you being on a low rider, uh, you can't, you can't do that in a venue where the low rider can't move around too much, which is what happened there. Uh, there just wasn't enough room for that car to make it towards the stage. So it was, it barely came out and then they had to get out of the car. And I was like, this this was a great idea and a bad execution of said idea. Um, they should have just filmed them in the parking lot getting out of it. Um, let's see. Uh, Chris Jericho defeated Brian Danielson, Claudio Casanoli, Sammy Gu and Sammy Guevara in a pinfall and a four way fight for the ring of honor world championship. Um, I don't have much to say about this. I'm kind of tired of all of these do other than Sammy. I think Sammy and Chris like that. There's maybe a, something to play up with there. Um, but I'm kind of tired of seeing, I'm tired of seeing Brian Danielson involved in any matches with Chris Jericho uh, right now. And the JAS. So Glassberg, I was not surprised about that because I feel like if, if their December ring of honor exclusive pay-per-view wasn't happening next month if there wasn't going to be a pay-per-view then maybe you do the title change but that's your main chris jericho putting the belt up against someone and probably losing it on the same night they announced the the tv or streaming deal for that that's a big thing because there'll be uh, there'll be a lot of eyes on ring of honor yeah, i don't think you have chris lose here on this pay-per-view so i went into it going oh no chris is gonna win and Chris is Chris is going to retain. He'll drop it because they'll want the star power in their main event of the Ring of Honor pay per view, uh, and then he'll drop it there. I don't know if he drops it to Claudio, if he drops it to someone new. Um, my fan booking would be that uh, the uh, a winner of a match later in this card would 
like drop his titles, his multiple titles, in order to get a title shot. Uh, because that is the man that I think should be the Ring of Honor champion, uh, Samoa Joe. I think Samoa Joe should uh, be in the main event against Chris Jericho and defeat Chris Jericho and become the Ring of Honor champion. I don't think that's going to happen, but I think that should be the person that happens because they did mention uh, uh, on the night how he was the champion of Ring of Honor for so long um, and that he's a better champion than Jericho. And I was like, I don't disagree with that. I also think that would be fucking cool. I don't know if we're getting that. I don't know who's going to do it, but I think that I think he drops the title at the December show. Uh, when they have a lot of press looking at it. Um, oh, yes. Well, that's what I'm saying last week. I think he, like, has to, like, well, if you want to be this, you can't, you like, you got to, like, he, like, gives up the belts for a title shot is the thing that I would, like, say that's more interesting than what they're doing right now. Um, uh, we'll jump to that right now, I guess. Oh, because Soraya versus Dr. Britt Baker. Uh, uh, Soraya, uh, Soraya wins. Uh, good honor. Um, I would have, some people were like, oh, I don't think she's going to win. And I was like, that would be so shitty if her big comeback after people, if she, she was retired as a wrestler and people thought she would never wrestle again. And then she's back and she's cleared to wrestle and it's her first match back. And then she just loses. I was like, nah, I don't know about that. People were like, well. Britt cut a face promo and people aren't loving her for other promos. And it's like, yeah, but she's still on the comeback. They're still going to cheer her when she shows up. It's like, eh, no, I don't know. Um, Samoa Joe defeated Wardlow and powerhouse Hobbs to win the AEW TNT champion. He is now the he is the only person in AEW slash Ring of Honor to have both a Ring of Honor, Honor the TV title and the AEW and AEW title the TNT Championship. Uh, I thought f- there was a possibility that they were going to have Wardlow drop the belt on the show because they are going to uh, ramp up for Wardlow to possibly feud with MJF in the near future, and they wanted him to eventually drop the belt, but not immediately drop the belt because sometimes you have the you drop the belt like like a week before you suddenly challenge and it feels weird because he even though he has the best win loss record of anyone in AEW uh having the TNT championship made that mean that he wasn't the number one contender which feels weird but that's how they're doing it so it was like oh well if he's not the one number one contender then okay but now that he doesn't have the belt he's clearly the number one contender for it it should be anyway uh obviously the eliminator thing takes precedent but he should easily be able to say, hey, give it give it to me. Um, so I assumed that that's what they were doing with it. Uh, okay, D10, D9. All right. Uh, 10 and 9, great. Um, so I, I don't know. But I am I, I was a little surprised that they, that they gave him two belts. But it is Samoa Joe, and Samoa Joe fucking rules. So I don't mind that. And maybe, maybe like... I mean, they shouldn't have Wardlow try to get his win back because I don't think he should. It is weird to have uh, Joe have two belts, but it's not. I'm not against it because he fucking rules. It it, it does fucking kind of suck for Powerhouse Hobbs, who could have had a good run with the title and maybe should have won the TNT title. Uh, Joe, well, look, here's the thing, Lastbrook. Joe doesn't need the belts but also is not in the main event picture for anything. And so he might as well have some fucking belts while he's just dicking around because I don't think they're going to put him in the world title picture for, I mean, they might put him in the ring of honor. Is, that's what I'm saying, but I don't know for sure if they're going to do that or not. So at least have him so, do something. He doesn't really need a belt, but he does need a storyline and having the belt is an easy storyline. Unfortunately, these days, these days. So, uh, but the match was cool. I, I, I would like to see, you know, honestly, I would like to see Hobbs be in a storyline with Joe and beat him for one of those two belts. I think that would be fucking cool. Joe doesn't need two titles. Put one on the line. No problem. I think that could be pretty cool. I don't know if they'll do that, but I could see that being you know, 
totally something. Um, Sting and Darby Allen defeated Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal with a lot of interference by Sanjay Dutt and a ton of just and then he might as well have been in the match. Satnam Singh by pinfall. This was a no disqualification tag match, so it was just a three on two match. Um, I don't have much to say about this match other than I can't fucking believe that Jeff Jarrett got a fucking payday from AEW, a wrestling payday. It's just... Jeff Jarrett got a payday in the same year from WWE for being a special referee, guest referee. Um, He got paid for being the main event of Ric Flair's last match. And he got paid to wrestle... Uh, and a pay-per-view match on AEW. That man knows how to get a fucking paycheck. Uh, a, in my opinion, undeserved amount of money from a bunch of companies. Complete nonsense. This is not taking away from his work behind the scenes, which apparently is great and people love it. And he's great at his job. That's awesome. From that perspective, great. Come in, do the work, get paid. I don't care. But from an in-ring perspective... And a talking on the microphone perspective. I don't want any more Jeff Jarrett. I just don't. Um, Jamie Hayter defeated Tony Storm to win the AEW uh, uh, um, Women's World Championship interim. We had a title change of the interim champion. Uh, Jamie Hayter is white hot and is such a great wrestler they completely botched the maybe her turning face and feuding with Brit thing because they because I think because of Soraya uh, coming in and they wanted to do that with Brit uh, I think that's why but they boned that real bad and really kind of lost momentum with her uh, I mean she was getting she had a fucking phenomenal it's, it's the match of the night for my opinion there's no match that was better wrestling on that card Outside of, for personal reasons, and it's zero or anyway, June versus uh, uh, Eddie is my match of the night because of emo- personal reasons. But objectively, as a as a wrestling fan, pure wrestling, it's Jamie Hayter versus Tony Storm. That's the best match on the card outside of personal, re- of personal feelings uh, where I can, you know, I, I can be subjective and say, you know, it's, it's Eddie in June because that match fucking kicked ass and was beautiful. And I watched it again because Zero Hour is on YouTube. If you want to watch the hour-long pre-show, the hey, please buy this pay-per-view show, it's on the AW's YouTube channel. You can just watch the three matches. You can watch a match that the first time I cried throughout it and the second time I didn't cry until after the match when Eddie Kingston is like pointing and then pointing at the ring and demanding that his friend uh, Ortiz come in the ring so they can hug in the ring because he's just like, hey, you you hey, get out here and hug me. And that made me cry because it's beautiful. I mean, that's the match of the goddamn night. But the match of the pay-per-view, if you don't count Zero Hour, is, is Jamie Hayter defeating Tony Storm. And that's great. Uh, yes, Eddie, Eddie Kingston just being like, how much time do I have? What? Oh, because you got to talk about... And he just starts naming matches that he thinks are great and telling people like, hey, buy the pay-per-view. Like, what, what are we doing here? And then the announcers are just laughing because they're just like, why do we need to do that? Just have Eddie do it. And I'm like, you should definitely have Eddie Kingston big up the pay-per-view. It's like, okay, I got to go. And he just runs away because he's talking too long. And they got to sell things. But yeah, it's just like, Hey, guess what our main event is? My buddy's going to beat the shit out of another guy. It's going to be great. Oh, let me tell you about Match of the Night. The people that I know are great. It's just like fucking fantastic. The three matches he mentions, two of them feature ladies. And it was just like, thanks, Eddie. That rules. And he wasn't wrong. Uh, I did see the the match, uh, uh, the after match interview. Yes. Uh, Eddie Kingston is... Living his dream. We talked about it on uh, Saturday. I was very emotional during it. I'm sure many of you were. And folks that were here or watched it later know. I got real emotional thinking about my man Eddie Kingston. uh, Living his goddamn dreams. Out there. Having great matches. He wants one more. Uh, 
which yeah yeah yes you should you should have one more they should do this again uh eddie kingston should fight all of the people eddie kingston wants to fight and more he should always be fighting uh if this is the new thing where Eddie Kingston doesn't have a fucking storyline that makes any sense or is any good in AEW, but every time a pay-per-view rolls around, he fights uh, a legend of Japanese wrestling that he's always wanted to fight on television, on pay-per-view. If that's what we're getting, I don't, like, I want him to have a great storyline. But if the storyline we get is, and now Eddie Kingston's going to fight one of his heroes. So like, okay, Sure. Sounds rad. Sign me up. Tell me all about it. Uh, we'll take a pause for the cause and talk about uh, ways you can support the channel and go through all that. Uh, real quick, acclaimed. Uh, some people didn't like this. Keith Lee walking out on his partner who wanted him to cheat, but I, I don't hate it. I think that like, you know, it's like I would rather he walk away than fight. Because like, you don't want like, Keith Lee to hit Swerve Strickland and cost him the match that way. Instead, he just abandoned him. And I'm like, I don't hate that. I think I like that better than the uh, than the alternative, which is like the punch. It's like, no, you slap me because I won't cheat. Because I won't use pliers to break someone's fingers. Yeah, I'm out of here. Keith Lee doesn't need fucking pliers to win a wrestling match. So he bounced and I don't hate that. And then the main event, look, the match itself, I got no problems with. Uh, the winner of the match, I got no problem with. The fact that MJF won because Regal helped him cheat, I don't like. And they can talk their way out of it, and that's fine. But I really like the Blackpool Combat Club. And even if the Blackpool Combat Club continues to exist without William Regal, then they got to change the fucking name because you can't be the Blackpool Combat Club if you don't have the guy from fucking Blackpool as part of it. Uh, and I did not like how that match ended. I was I was fine with shenanigans because you got to have shenanigans. It's a wrestling match. It's the main event. I don't believe you can, you can beat Moxley without wearing brass knuckles and hitting him in the face uh, because he has lost like twice this fucking year. It feels like, uh, so I don't know how you do it otherwise, but I don't know. I haven't made my peace with it yet. I'll, I will be willing to, to listen to a promo on Wednesday to justify why, uh, William Regal, uh, decided that he would help MJF win the championship. I'm willing to listen to that promo, even if I think that it was a nonsense, unnecessary decision. Uh, and that's full gear. Um, because of football or basket, because of sports, I believe it's football, because of sports, uh, AW Rampage this week is at like 4.30 in the afternoon or something, Eastern. It's like, it's in the afternoon. It's going to be a fucking bummer. Um, check your local listings. They definitely got the sports definitely uh, boned them. They got they got definitely fucked over by sports. Is this the right piece that doesn't? I think this is the wrong piece. I don't think this is E one sixteen. This is E one. No, this is E one sixteen. This is the right piece. Oh, it's gotta go like that. I got gotcha. you. I got. I get it. Putting it in backwards. Uh, they start crashing. I'll hit the dance button. Here you go. All right. I'm going to dance. I'm not dancing that much. Either. My body not letting me dance much. I'm trying to move it. There we go. All right. Uh, intro. Here we go. Hi. Uh, we're going to do the pause for the cause and then I'll get back to working on this. Uh, if you are currently a subscriber, you can throw the Bear Cave, the Lego, the site, the moat in the chat. Let the people know that you are a subscriber here with the old Bill Wood Bear uh, by throwing those emotes into chat. You get tier two, you get the blue emote. Being a subscriber is the easiest way to support what I do here through cash money or through your Prime Gaming token or through gifted subs. 
because uh, we got Firestar Man, Lord Crashton, and Aristophan all gifted subs this month, which is radical. Thank you very much to everybody that's gifted a sub. So you can become a subscriber. You get cool emotes. You don't see ads before pre-roll ads uh, before you, you you know when you click on the link here. Uh, and you are supporting me financially so I could do fun things. Um, Harold says, when you said dance button, I was thinking of the random dance party button from Desert Bus. That is an inspiration, Harold, uh, of the idea of channel points for music to play and then I will dance. Originally, that is, the ska button was because there was a conversation about how there wasn't enough ska. Uh, oh, they had a great time. Desert Bus was fantastic. They, they had a really great time, really entertaining time, raised a bunch of money uh, despite lots of reasons why it wouldn't be that easy to, to raise a bunch of money uh yeah but the ska button was de de definitely like based on a conversation where uh one i knew i could put music on the stream deck and two there's not enough ska in the in the random dance party so now it's a just the regular old dance button but there are many ways to support what i do here i mentioned all the ways through twitch uh subscribing gifting a sub bits and coins always appreciated there's also alternatives to that if you're like pat i do not attach my credit card to twitch not gonna do it well how about patreon patreon.com slash pat bear there is a one dollar a three dollar a five dollar and a ten dollar tier there are different rewards for the different tiers and you should take a look and see if you want to support me on patreon there are rolling signups so if you sign up today you will not be charged again for a whole month uh, which is nice um also, I have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Pat Bear. There, uh, there are a lot of videos there, and you can watch my videos. Please subscribe. Subscribing is free, as you know. But becoming a member is uh, $2 a month. You can join, and then you get uh, my Wednesday videos on Tuesday. So tomorrow, you will get early a video that I'm putting out for everybody else on Wednesday. Um, and we'll talk more about the Wednesday series when we get there. Um, and then there's uh, direct donations, because... Uh, you know, I know how it is. A monthly subscription, maybe you don't want to do that all the time. You don't want to put that money in there. You don't want to use Prime Gaming Token. I understand. What about a one-time benefit to me through coffee or PayPal or Stream Elements? Everything I make through. Direct donations through um, watching uh, or supporting me on YouTube or Patreon or Twitch or even watching my videos because uh, ad sets for YouTube. Uh, all goes into a fund. I buy model kits with that. I pre-ordered this heavy arms. I would not have been able to get this heavy arms custom without your generous support. So thank you very much uh, uh, for being able to support me uh, financially so that I'm able to pre-order cool looking mobile suits that, that strike my fancy. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, so the next thing I'm going to build will probably be something for my backlog unless someone buys something off my Amazon wish list, in which case... Uh, the next thing that I build comes to the wish list because you buy something from my wish list, uh, it jumps the queue, it becomes the next thing that I build. I shoot a video dedicated, um, a mailbag video about it. Well, let's take a look at the Amazon wish list. What we got here? We've got some inexpensive Lego sets. There's a three in one um, dolphin and turtle three in one. It's uh, it's on sale right now. It is a dollar cheaper. Uh, so you get that. Um, uh, the we mentioned the Rose uh, Gundam. There is a Rose Gundam coming out next year, uh, the high grade. This is a non-grade Rose Gundam from like the early 90s. We built a couple of these before. I've got that. I've got Lego sets. I've got some Pokemon on here. Um, inexpensive kits, expensive kits, kits with free shipping, kits without prime shipping. Um, some gear at the bottom because it's always nice to have some gear. Uh, hey, speaking of my stream deck and how on my stream deck I can play audio i have a six button the mini steam deck the elgato steam deck the mach 2 version the 15 button one is currently on sale for 120 dollars. am i telling you to spend 120 dollars on me no i'm just but i'm telling you it's on sale and there'll be more sales so imagine just imagine you're watching my stream on thursday and i'm gonna fucking be telling you about things that are on sale if they're on sale on my wish list uh because maybe that'll entice you to buy something uh, I don't even stream, but I kind of want a new one with knobs. Oh, yes. I did see the new one with knobs, everybody. I have seen the knobs. I like buttons more than knobs. But I have seen the knobs. I've seen... I, I've, I've seen the knobs, everybody. They don't even let me touch the knobs. Um, 
I'll turn I'll turn it. Amazon wish list. That's great. There's alternatives to that. Um, I have another wish list on Throne. I got a few model kits, mostly gift cards and some gear on Throne. Much more curated list, but you can take a look at that. And then also you can just go to USA Gundam Store, buy a gift card there. You got to get an account. You get a gift card. And then you can send me a DM on Twitter while that's still a thing. Or you could send me a whisper here on Twitch because that is also a thing. Uh, to USA, And that give me the gift card to USA Gundam Store. You get a gift card code in your email and you send it to me um let's see other things that we can talk about here uh those are all the ways to spend money to support me but if you want to support me for free join my discord i post build photos at the end of every stream people post stuff they're working on people just send me links on that discord which is lovely of them um so take a look at that see if there's something you know you want to join that and hang out in a lovely little community uh that is pretty fucking chill uh, and there's a couple people that are just in there that don't really watch the streams much anymore. They just hang out in the Discord, and that's fine. A um, couple video links. A new episode of Pat Bear's Anime Club just fucking dropped everybody. And guess what? This episode, it's Pat Bear's Manga Club. I didn't change the title because it, I, I shouldn't. But it is actually Pat Bear's Manga Club because I'm talking about uh, a thing that maybe you've never heard of called... V scrolls, V dash scrolls, vertical scroll comics. Basically, there is a small amount of manga being created in the not in not traditional, in the traditional left to right style of panels. No, they're doing the vertical style of full page or <clears throat> or half page, the Korean style, the Mawa style. Some manga are getting on board with that. There's even uh, a couple manga that are colorizing their previous things and changing it and and remaking it for vertical because they're trying to see if that will be big because you could just use it on your phone so i do a whole video about v scrolls kind of answering like because a friend of mine the other day asked me like hey i saw i saw the term v scroll on uh on a website do you know what is that what are v scroll comics and i was like "Ooh, this will be a good pat bears anime club video and i actually think it is a good pat bears anime club video so Take a look at that if you want to learn something. Watch it when the stream isn't happening. And then Do You Remember is an ongoing video series where every week I do some hasty research and then record myself talking about that subject. Uh, uh, and hopefully I remember things from it. This is uh, uh, was about weeding, but the library version of weeding, not the gardening version of weeding, which is a thing. Um, so I talked about that. Uh, and I think that video is pretty edge i would say that maybe isn't funny but it's definitely like educational perhaps maybe you'll learn something i don't know uh we've got to talk about a manwa because it's it's manwa monday and then we also have some anime to talk about but before we do that i have to drink water because i am parched so i'm gonna drink some water and we'll dramatically transition back to the overhead camera and talk about some manga or manwa actually here we go Ah, all right. That was good. All right, so we got we got some parts here. We got to put a few more things on here. We got some of our uh, our rockets, uh, our, our you know missiles here, our shoulder weapons. We're getting those together. We're gonna keep working on that with a three. Um, and then as we're doing that, and of course we got yeah, we just got to get those together here. All right, as we're doing that, of course we will talk about. The manhwa that I want to chat about with you, which is, uh, let me just get this set up here. Okay, here we go. Yes, let's talk about Demon Lord's Martial Art Ascension. This is a manhwa that answers the question, what if you suddenly remembered that you are a reincarnation of the Demon Lord? What would you do? Our main character's answer is, uh, you will get ridiculously strong. And eventually enter a tower and fight in that tower. So backstory of this of this manhwa, the South Korean comic. It's a V scroll. It's vertical scrolling. So you can you know read it on the on the subway platform or whatever. You know, wait for your train. You just scroll through your thumb. You know, move it. Load through all these big color images. Um, if you wanted to. Uh, so what what is it? 
I will I will do my best to explain uh, this particular story. Um, so, years ago, two different realms invaded Earth at the same time. There were like demons and there were angels. You've heard this before. You understand these kind of stories. We got our demons. We got our angels. They're showing up. They're fighting. They're both trying to take control of Earth. And in the midst of all of this, mankind awakens their own abilities and their own powers of like hunters. And a hero emerges. And the hero somehow manages to stab a holy sword into one of the four big demons, also known as a demon lord. And, but that's, that's the, the thing is, his real body wasn't there on earth, so he shouldn't have died. Just his apparition should have died. But somehow, and he doesn't know how that happened, he, his soul, he did die, and his soul entered a human. And that guy just kind of hung out for a long time until as part of his college field trip went to um, uh, the museum in South Korea and they go and see the exhibit of the sword. The sword is traveling around in an exhibit and they're like, oh, shit, we should look at that. And so our main character goes up and looks at it. And then the sword starts levitating and then kills him, goes right through him. But that didn't actually happen. Instead, he passed out because he was reliving the moment that he was stabbed with the sword as the demon lord. Instead, he's just a dude who has now awakened all his memories and his current memories. And a thing that I really appreciate about this story is... There's a bunch of chapters that, that happen where he's just like getting stronger and he's like uh, getting a piece of gear that he left in storage as the demon lord. And he's like encounters a demon and uh, gets some cool powers and starts like leveling up by defeating monsters and going on raids and, and doing all that stuff. Uh, he does all that shit. And there's not a point where for a while where we remember that he has friends and he was going to college and he has a family and he, which I really appreciate. He has a moment where he goes, oh, I got really fucking caught up in being powerful and wanting to get more powerful. Uh, and all my memories of who I was that I kind of forgot. I'm also this human guy that has like a, a sister that I annoy with. And my parents own a fried chicken restaurant and I should probably, be a better son. I guess I got to fucking be a better son, uh, which I really appreciate because you don't see that all the time on these kind of stories. Usually it's just like somebody that was like abandoned and all alone. This guy was just like, he wasn't like betrayed by anyone. He wasn't left for dead and, and unwoken his hidden potential. He, he, you know, he, he's not part of like some grand conspiracy or anything. This is just a dude who, um, like was, going through life and doing his thing and kind of was like, oh, maybe I could be a hunter someday. Probably wasn't going to be one. And now he's like super powerful and going through with emotions uh, and people are fucking pissed at him and trying to fuck with him uh, because he scored so well on the entrance exam and he stood some people up, made them look bad. Uh, and then we were leaving off here. He's done a thing that he couldn't do because he's a human. Now he's a human, but before he was a, a, a higher being, he couldn't enter the Tower of Trials. So he is entering the tower. And it's that's also interesting because he doesn't have like knowledge from his previous life to like fall back on. He just has to like do it as as who he is with his with his granted very impressive abilities and knowledge and understanding of what's going on. Um uh so like I don't know, I'm I'm into it. Um, I think it is, uh, it is pretty fun. Um, I love that instead of joining one of the guilds, he just becomes bankrolled by the international bank because the dwarf that he met is just like, this guy is going to make me a lot of money. So let's invest in him. Let's find a contract with him. So he's like, he's backed by like people that don't generally back folks instead of like having to deal with like a guild. So we don't have to deal with like 
Ah, oh, this guild like keeps underestimating him, which is which is always annoying. So I would say if you want to get on board with a mo- like, there's 20 chapters, so it's it's fairly new. You think 20 chapters? That's a lot. This is manhwa. They come out weekly, so it hasn't been running that long. I'm sure it's based on a webtoon, like a web novel that I haven't read, and I'm sure that goes is very detailed and goes on forever and all that. But like, I don't know. Shit rules. Uh, I'm really into it. I think it's really good. I would recommend. Uh, people take take a, a look at it and see if there's something, see if that uh, appeals to you. If my description of it appealed to you, I would say check it out because it is uh, pretty great. Art's good. I uh, mean, you know, art's always, you know, not always, but mostly solid. There are a couple like manhwa that I don't like looking at, but for the most part, you know, their art's usually pretty, pretty, so, pretty solid. It's a pretty standard affair. I like him because he is... Um, He's very cocksure, like he's sure of himself because he was a demon, but he's also aware of his own limits and he is growing pretty exponentially, but he's still at least aware uh, sometimes of of what his level's at. Um, But it also is incredibly funny that he is, again, just a really strong guy, uh, but he is not a complete and total asshole, which is nice. It is nice to have a guy who is not a complete goddamn jerk Uh, because we get... Enough of those in uh, in stories. And I'm, I don't mind a good anti-hero, but I don't necessarily love a uh, a very successful asshole as a main character. And now we're going to talk about some anime. We talked about some, uh, a manhwa. That was my manhwa recommendation. Demon Lords Martial Art Ascension. Now it's time to talk about some anime. Uh, oh, I do want to check this real quick here. There we go. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's talk about Mobile Suit Gundam, The Witch from Mercury, a.k.a. Uh, even in even in the distant future, it's tough to talk to your in-laws, especially when your in-law is part of a vast conspiracy to or revenge plot. You don't know that you don't know that you're the girl that you're said you're going to marry uh, that her mom who your mom who's mysterious and wears a mask, like, you don't necessarily know that Prospera is going to be so cold and calculating to you. And you're like, what's going on there? Anyway, um, so uh, Suleta is invited to the incubation party, which is a, a bunch of startups. Oh, we love that. We love episodes about startups and trying to get seed money. Uh but she's invited because she wants to. Uh, she wants to meet with uh, Alan, who we know uh, was a clone, uh, and so she meets the original Alan, who is trying to pretend to be the Alan that she met, uh, and apparently he's able to convince her uh, that that he's fine, that everything's fine, and she she buys it. We'll see if she continues to buy it, or if she suddenly has some sort of understanding that, oh, wait, maybe this is all bullshit. Right now, she's buying the bullshit. Um, and then, let's see. Oh, okay. Uh, and then they're like, hey, guess what? This guy, Elon? Yeah, that's a fucking Gundam, everybody. Guess what? Uh, that's a Gundam. And turns out, hey, because it reacted this way, not only is it a Gundam, but also Ariel is definitely a fucking Gundam, everybody. Uh, and they're like, hey, look, we made a Gundam. Uh, look, we know we made a Gundam. And even though we made it, obviously Ariel needs to get scrapped. Uh, but then Maureen is like, I'm going to make a, a company to research Gundam technology or gun Gundarm technology that will be safe for people. So even if we have one, it's fu- it's going to be fucking fine. Uh, can I get some investors? Um, and then uh, doesn't get any. But then uh, her father's like, all right, yeah, that sounds like actually, you know what? That's a pretty cool idea, daughter of mine. Sure. I'm paraphrasing here. But he's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So she manages to get that. Um and then there's a lot of this mother-in-law stuff here, like Maureen and uh, 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 Morinay. 
more in a and uh i say marine but it's i believe it's more in a that's probably closer to what it actually is um yeah they have a fucking encounter uh which is like she's like really weirded out by how aggressive her future mother-in-law is um very tense and then prospera is like yeah saletta ariel is a gundam and the thing everybody but you understood uh, yeah, you've been piloting a fucking Gundam this whole time. Yeah, that's a Gundam. Which is like, it's what, like I said, it's one of those things where you're like, yeah, duh. Yeah, Go- Ghost Valve puts the shocked emoticon. Yes, shocking. Hey, guess what, everyone? Gundam Ariel was a Gundam this whole time. That's a fucking, hey, guess what? That, that's a Gundam. Uh, me watching this, me watching uh, Mobile Suit Gundam, The Witcher Mercury, when... The Gundam Aerial comes on screen, poking my date. That's the Gundam Aerial. I think that works as better as a joke there. Uh, but it didn't pro- produce a data storm or use the Gund arm format. You're right, John. It's a special Gundam. Uh, yes, last word. There's a there's a lot to understand that. While Suleta probably should have figured out that her that, that the responsiveness she has with Ariel should be very clear that it is special. Uh uh Yeah. That Ari and Suleta probably like aren't necessarily the same people. Uh that that's I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot of like mm, there are a lot of people in this show that I don't believe to be necessarily trustworthy with information. Uh, there are a lot, of, there's a lot of suspect information being presented by a lot of different people. And so I think that is totally reasonable to be skeptical about everything when it comes to uh, Witch from Mercury for now anyway. I think there's like, cause there are like reveals that we see coming and then there are reveals that I don't think uh, we're ready yet for yet. Uh, sorry, I was check this real quick here. Um, I mean, there's a bunch of like, there's a bunch of beliefs. Like the look, I'll say this: there is a fan theory that Suleta is a clone. Um, so like the math, because the math doesn't work right, I guess. Uh, but like the, I don't know. It's one of those things just like, I kind of don't want, I kind of want her to just be a special girl. Uh, unless she was frozen a bit. Yeah. I mean, also, if you told me that she was frozen, yeah, that she was cryogenically frozen as a child, so they could pump her with, it, if if you're telling me that they didn't ex- that, that 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 they put her in um cryo freeze for a number of years and experimented on her to make her even better of a Gundam pilot, I'd believe that. I think being frozen, I believe more than she's a clone. Even though there are clones in this series, I feel like clones are a red herring. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know why I don't want her to be a clone, but I think, I, I think the story set, I think the story is worse if she's a clone than what they're going for here. I don't know. I, I don't know why I, I haven't really put enough effort into explaining myself on this and I apologize for that, but I do think that the story is worse if she's a clone. Cause I think it's like. I don't know. I think I feel like that's a cop out. But again, the story can go anywhere it wants to go because it is an original piece of animation. So they can take the twist they want to take and they can tell the stories they want to tell. And hopefully they can pay off whatever they're doing with it. Uh, You know, this was not an action episode. This was this was like I said, this was a this was a seed money investment thing. 
and also a showcase to get mad at people. <laughs> it's a good opportunity for people to get mad at each other. Excuse me. And accuse each other of things. So I don't know. I don't know where that's going to go. Um, I'm interested to see because I genuinely am enjoying this particular story. So, uh, Animation is goddamn gorgeous and the fight scenes were great. And the music has been fucking stellar. It is just a pleasure. The whole thing is just a pleasure. We got our uh, our, our blade here, our wrist blade. The only thing that sucks about uh, our uh, the upgrade that we saw there is that it doesn't have a cool blade like this. It should have. Really, the, dev, the, the Heavy Arms Endless Waltz version should have multiple blades just popping out of wherever. I will say I cracked up when I saw the special suit for the CD release of the OP. Just in the episode. Yes, indeed, right? Um, yeah, let's put it in there. That is funny. Um, all right, next thing we're talking about, Beast Tamer. Uh, Beast Tamer, which is focused on uh, Mother's Basement list of uh, trash from this season. and uh, But it's wholesome trash, because it really is. This is like, the this was the, the first episode that was ever like suggestive at any point. There was a pretty typical... Um, uh, got caught accidentally seeing people naked moment in this episode, but it was handled in a way that rarely happens, which was kind of nice, uh, but goes kind of just goes with the plot of it, just goes with the story of it. Um, but even if it was like typical, I was still like, oh, that's that's fine, I'll take that. Um, we'll get to it anyway. Uh, Rain's party now consists of him, the probably the world's best beast tamer like clearly at least the world's strongest because of all his powers um so d122 and d13 okay 29 um so yeah we got rain world's best beast tamer we've got the cat spirit kanade the dragonoid tanya and the twin fairy girls uh sora and luna who are hiding their wings uh so they just look like young human ladies um, and they've they've always missed tr uh, trust. They, they've, they've never had a good trust for humans. Uh, Rain is the first human they've ever accepted. So they're weirded out by being in the city and like meeting people and like noticing that Tanya and uh, uh, Kanade have like kind of figured out how to live with these people and and be you know and survive and kind of communicate with them. So they're like, all right, I guess we could probably try to do that too. Um, anyway, uh, they want to get some gear and they find, uh, Gantz, who is a dwarf who has been told he is the, uh, you know, he's the best place to go if you want armor and, and gear because, uh, our boy needs a weapon. He's been fighting under, uh, unarmed, but he really needs a weapon. So Rain needs to get something cool. Uh, and Rain kind of notices, Hey dude. Uh, some of this gear looks cool. It's very flashy, but I don't know if it's actually good. Are you actually selling that? It turns out Gantz has been selling stuff that looks great, but isn't like actually that strong, uh, to people because, uh, people just want to spend a lot of money and get the best thing money could buy, but they don't actually care about the weapons and they'll just get a new weapon whenever. So he's been kind of testing them. So he likes rain. And he's like, Hey rain, I, I think you're cool. I'll make you a custom weapon. The problem is I would need, because of course there's always a problem. Gantz is just like, hey, uh, if I want to make you a top tier weapon, I need materials. I need some mithril ore, but my mine, for whatever reason, my the, the no one can see because like nobody knows how it's happening. But like something's up with the mine. It's haunted or something because like I can't find the things I need. Like the the mithril is like disappearing. So. Of course, our party's going to go help them. In exchange for this cool weapon, they're going to go take on this request and figure out what's going on. All along the way, they take a break at a lake and the girls all go swimming and Rain is like, I'm going to take a nap and not be near here. But then, guess what? As I mentioned, shenanigans. There's a scream and he rushes in to see if everyone's okay. Uh, but it turns out it's mostly fine. Our cat girl just got her tail got bit by a fish. But of course, everybody's naked and he sees everyone naked. 
And he's just like, ah, fuck. All right, well, I'll do whatever you want and to apologize and all that. And it's like, in another anime, he'd get slapped in the face and it would be a whole thing and they would keep bringing it up and then, like, they'd see him naked or something and it'd be a whole thing. And this one, they know that Rain didn't mean it and it's embarrassing, but they're like, yeah, they're they're all grown-ups about it. They're like, yeah, sorry, dude. It's cool. Try to be more careful. And you're just like, oh, shit, this is a wish fulfillment, uh, wholesome action series. Because everybody's just like, yeah, that sucks. I'm embarrassed. Wish you hadn't. And then they like, joke about, like, do you want to go swimming? <laughs> and he was like, no, I'm good. And it's just like, ah, oh, that's kind of fun. Uh, that was handled, I think, pretty well. Uh, then they get to the mine and they realize, hey, uh, there are definitely adventurers here. And they are mad and try to attack them and they get knocked out. Uh, then we find out that the fairies have the ability to read minds. And we learn that these are adventurers and they're more inside. And Rain deduces that one of these adventurers is also a beast tamer. So, uh-oh. Rain might have to fight a beast tamer, uh, it sounds like. So, we'll, uh, that's the next episode. Again, uh, even the wholesome... You know, it's wholesome all the time. And even when it's like, oh, we're going to get mad because of this booby thing. Like, it wasn't like, it was fan service e, but not like explicit. Uh, and I think compared to other shows, totally fine. Like compared to like uh, the one with Gildan name, it starts with an F that is just so goddamn horny and exploitive. That one's just awful. Or even the ninja, one, there's a, a, a story about a guy, a guy, turns out he's like the descendant of ninjas and he didn't know that. And then at least one of his girlfriends wants to kill him. But there's a lot of girlfriends. And it's just like, those things are gross and weird. Uh, I would say Beast Tamer is pretty damn... pretty Beast Tamer's pretty tame. Uh, I don't have a good transition to go from that to Management of a Novice Alchemist. Which is, Jesus Christ... I knew that this was going to be about like running an, uh, an alchemy business and it is about running an alchemy business, but it's so much of this goddamn story is about um, uh, like it's just so much about money. Like so much of it revolves around like running a business and the problems with, with business and getting capital and like uh, and this whole episode is about like a dude that is trying to take advantage and like corner the market and is taking advantage of a lot. Like it's just like a greedy merchant is the, is basically the deal with this episode and how like she battles against a greedy merchant. She's like, okay, I guess. So, um, there's a new merchant that wants the frost bat fangs. And, uh, this merchant is, Oh, oh look, check this out. This merchant offering people more money than Sarasa is because she, he's trying to undercut her business, right? Drive, drive her into debt so that, you know, then, you know, she'll have to work for him or whatever. So, um, and also it, it there's a, a, a suspicion that maybe this guy employs bandits, which obviously Sarasa parents uh, were killed by bandits. Also, Loria, the, the younger lady that works with her, her grandparents were killed by bandits. So they got a vested interest in being fucking pissed about that. Uh, so Sarasa like increases her, uh, how much she's paying to buy the, uh, them. Um, so she increases how much she's willing to pay. And because people like her, they'll take her price. And then she sells them to the merchant and he's starting to lose money. Uh, And then uh, finds out that this merchant, Agree, actually owns the alchemy company. And uh, he forces alchemists to work for him by, like, basically, the thing he's trying to do with Sarasa is put her out of business. So she's forced to work for him. And then he can exploit her. So that is that is what's happening with this particular story. Like, that's what she's they're trying to do. Um, so then we have Sarsa like outwit him and like figure out what he's up to and 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 uh, and kind of like fuck with him at every opportunity, which is good. We like that. We do we do appreciate that. Um, uh, so of course, because he's so messing with her, uh, he has to borrow money to keep his own shop open. 
And of course, he uses some of that borrowed money to send bandits to attack her, but she whips their asses. Um, and then he needs he needs money, so she's like, "All right, well, uh, let me buy all of your fangs, all these fangs that you you know bought from other people. Let me buy them for a very little, low amount of money." Uh, and then, of course, that's not enough money to repay his debts, so he's fucked. And then he, uh, she uses the teeth to, to get money to pay the debt of the alchemists. And you're like, well, Pat, that's not, this show is so capitalist, but that doesn't actually sound very capitalist. Well, she's helping them, one, because she does feel bad, but two, because she's going to make really great business contacts uh, in the future. In case she needs some help. And that might come in handy. So basically she's just. She's like oh yeah. The, that way there are more alchemists on their feet. And then I can. Um, uh, you know. I, I can make a deal with them later. So this one had a little bit of action. It did have Sarasa like. be Like a girl who on occasion. Is really like. Uh, at her last wits. And dealing with a lot. It was kind of nice to have an episode where she was like, you know, figuring things out and riding like, you know, like knew exactly what to do and was getting shit done the way that she needed to get it done. And I kind of like that for this episode that it had like those moments where it was like, oh, no, this girl is like capable. Like she's gone through a bunch and she's trying her best. And sometimes things get out from under her. But like because the last episode was her without her charm that lets her control her powers like just fucking up and like losing uh kind of losing her cool so it was nice to have this episode where it's like hey someone is fucking with me that's not gonna work i don't know that was, it was just kind of neat that's a fun it's a fun series that i like a lot it's not my favorite show this season it's definitely not even my favorite girls doing things episode or series this season but it is pretty okay uh and that's the anime that i've been watching now is the part of the stream where I want to hear from you, friends. What are you watching? What are you playing? Uh, what's going on with you? Uh, I'm going to give a Pat Bear life update, which is, um, uh, as you know, floorboards removed from our living room. Uh, last month, one of the two car, car accident. Everyone's okay. But one of two cars need repair. Um, car, next Friday, we're getting that uh back supposedly it'll be ready next friday um because they have the parts they need and they're doing that and they have to paint one of the parts uh so we're hoping next next week we'll have that which is great um so that's pat bear life update and then garage door won't open it's a there's an opener it's a mechanical and that's not working and i don't know why so we're gonna find out we thought maybe it was the sensor uh, the door sensors that like turn themselves off so that you don't, you know, so there's an open and close if there's somebody there. Uh, it's not the sensor as far as we can tell. We don't know. So I had to manually lift this very heavy door with no assistance all the way up. And there's no handle on it because it's not meant to be open and closed by hand. Had to open it all the way up so that the, gar the, the car could get backed out and then lower it to almost the exact ground and then slip my hands away so I didn't crush my own hands. Uh, which was um, not fun. So that's uh, that's my update there. Uh, because when it rains, it fucking pours, my friends. Um, so we'll find out. Hopefully. The other thing is, when are we going to get someone to come out and look at that? Because it's going to, we're going to have to call them on Tuesday of Thanksgiving week. Who knows when we can get someone out to take a look at our uh, garage door. Very fun. Um John gave us an update. Yes, I want to hear what you're playing, what you're watching, what you're checking out, saying halfway done with Pokemon Scarlet Pokedex and nearing what is probably the end game. We are catching up on American Horror Story in New York City right now. Hell yeah, M. John. Um, yes, that is pretty fast as last work. Yeah, I mean, half your Pokedex filled. Hell yeah. Uh, obviously, uh, not obviously, y'all probably know, not playing Pokemon right now because I don't have a Switch, so I'm not playing the latest Pokemon. And I don't like not playing the latest Pokemon. I am... I've missed out on a couple generations now, and that that's a bummer. Um, hopefully, someday I will get a switch and get the old games and get caught up. Um, has has Pokemon? I'm checking this out right now. 
Has Pokemon Smasher Pass been updated with the new Pokemon? Let's see. Has po no. The new Pokemon have not been added to Pokemon-Smash-Or-Pass.com, the site we used to uh, to figure out uh, the Pokemon here. Uh, so I do not know. Um, waiting to, you know, waiting for that to get updated so that eventually we can do a Tuesday stream where I rate uh, the new Pokemon if they are friends or foes, basically, is, is our version of Pass or Smash. Um, uh, but I do want to, you know, I do want to see, I want to watch some streams of people playing it. I haven't, I haven't been able to do that lately, but I, or right now I want to do that. Um, I did not play any video games yesterday or today other than Hearthstone, just Hearthstone. So I don't have any updates of any games I've been playing. I do want to play Pentiment. I do very much want to play Pentiment, but I have not yet. Uh, cause that does seem something that's right up my alley. Uh, so I would like to play that have not yet. Um, uh, that is like probably the next game that I want to play. Um, but yeah, Sunday didn't do any, didn't do any of that. Uh, just worked and got caught up with stuff. Hey, fun, fun fact for a uh, Pat bear update, life update for, for your friend, Pat. Um, I'm doing customer service on Friday. That's right. Uh, I'm going to be doing three hours of customer service. They are paying me, uh, double the, my, my rate. Uh, so not even time and a half, double time. I'm getting paid double time to work three hours of customer service that does include live chat which will be fucking annoying but uh but i'm still gonna do it because it pays double so even though it's only a three-hour shift for customer service stuff i'm still gonna take it because that's still money and that would be nice to have so there's your pat bear life update from your friend pat that's what i'm up to uh let's see sorry let me just get rid of this great um Let's see. Um, played more of the Atari 50 collection. It's very funny. The widescreen frame border for Lynx games is just a big picture of a Lynx. So it looks just like the screen in the middle. Yes, I think that is very cute. I've seen that. I have not played that uh, yet. Uh, I did get Atari 50, but I have not played any Lynx games. But that is very fun. Um, continuing with One Piece as they assault an East Lobby uh, and have a nice moment of informing the Giants about their buddies not being in jail after all. Yes, indeed. The Giants are always fun. Those Giants continue to be great. Um, I had no idea the Lynx had a power on and off buttons. Yup. Choices were made. The Lynx was a, the Atari Lynx was an interesting video game system. All right, we got a lot done of this kit. We're going to wrap things up here, but check a look at this kit. We got, uh, we got, we're going to take two photos of this. We'll take some, you know, we've got, uh, our rockets here. We've got our sword hand or our wrist blade thing. Uh, but we got a lot done with this kit, I would say right now, which is cool. Uh, we'll, we'll continue to work on the arms and then we'll go into the waist or we'll do the feet and then work our way up. Uh, I believe we will finish this kit during Saturday stream. I don't think we'll finish it by tomorrow or by Thursday, but we'll get a lot done. Um, yes, you're very, you're very right. Lord question is, uh, look, Harold also dabbled some Atari 50. It's a coffee table book in video game form. Uh, the carbo content is wonderful. I love the, the choice to make it like a timeline and just like click on this, play this. If you want move over here, what's up, what's extra stuff. It's all great. It's such a wonderful presentation. It's done so well. Anyway, um, this is we're getting towards the end of the show we are going to go on a raid because we do end every stream with a raid um so we'll go find somebody out there doing cool shit that we want to go hang out with i mean look we're going to raid mary kish right if mary's still streaming we're going to raid mary because mary rules as in john says we always end with a raid uh and if if given the opportunity we'll raid mary mary's playing pentiment great we're going to raid mary because she only streams on monday uh and hopefully she still has uh internet because uh the last time we raided her she had lost power and internet and was doing it on her phone she was just uh streaming her fireplace uh which was really fun uh it was a fun little stream uh she has power this time great thanks lord crash for the update um of course last week we didn't raid her because we every stream we raided a uh, desert bus but we we're in a raid Mary kish thank you all so much for being here tomorrow 9 p.m eastern 
uh, uh, come check out, uh, hang out with me as I play Pokemon Platinum Randomizer. It's a Pokemon Platinum Randomizer run tomorrow, 9 p.m. Uh, uh, Eastern time. Come check out that stream. It'll be very fun. You'll have a good time. Come along on this raid. Thanks so much for being here. I hope you have a great night. Uh, this was a fun Monday stream. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, 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 goodbye.